first place, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers of this conference uh, for having me uh, this uh, invited talk. So the, the title of this work is Visible Light Positioning for Industrial Environments. Um, I work at the KU Live as an associate professor at the technology campus in Ghent. As uh, some of you may know that uh, the KU Live has uh, since about eight years, different campuses spread all over Flanders, where the technology campus of Ghent is one of the larger ones. And the, the focus of uh, my research is on uh, visible light positioning uh, for indoor applications, of course. Now, um, before getting this story started, I would like to emphasize that uh, the majority of the work, especially the experimental work, has been executed by uh, excellent researchers such as Wilm Raas, Juri Gebreger and uh, Glenn Groothuis. So uh, all the credits uh, for the experimental work goes to them. All right, uh, let's get started. So um, outline, uh, first of all, um, some words about uh, how to go from elimination to positioning. Um, secondly, the design choices that we have made in our setup and the drivers, therefore. Um, then a little bump in the road on the uh, disappointing intermediate results that we obtained experimentally. Um, how these were tackled, uh, first in a small scale and after that in a an, an warehouse-like environment. And then uh, a number of conclusions and um, a view on the future work. Okay, um, now we'll try to get a pointer. So from elimination um, to positioning. So on the left hand side, uh, you have an, uh, an, an indoor uh, environment where um, the majority of the infrastructures, you also need an elimination um, infrastructure. These are indicated by the um, by the LEDs or the light bulbs on top of that. And in general, uh, due to multipart and an obstruction of the, um, of the satellite uh, signals, uh, you can not deploy GNSS, um, which is something uh, that works very well outside. But for indoor uh, environments, it doesn't work. And even if it would work, you often don't have the accuracy that you need. Um, and, and the accuracies for indoor environments are typically, especially if you're working with uh, automated guide vehicles or forklift trucks, let us say it's, uh, below 20 centimeter you need it because otherwise uh, you're getting too close to other obstacles. Clearly for outside environments, uh, the, um, the constraints are less uh, strict. So if we take a look uh, at the right hand side picture, what you really want to do is use that uh, illumination infrastructure um, also for positioning. Uh, the advantages that the, the light uh, bulbs are uh, available, so uh, large parts of the infrastructure is there. Uh, the goal is to modify it so that the double uh, functionality is being uh, deployed once as illumination and once as uh, beaconing where information is transmitted by each LED that can be used by the mobile device in order to uh, position itself within the indoor premises. Now, a number of uh, choices can be made um, with regards to the, uh, the multiplexing uh, scheme. What you can do, for instance, is um, to time division multiple axes where each LED is transmitting information during a specific time slot. Um, here we have uh, chosen four time slots, only three LEDs are present. Um, so the first time slot, LED A is transmitting information. The second one is LED B, LED C. Um, and that works very well, only from a uh, practical point of view, this is quite challenging uh, due to the fact that you need synchronization between the LEDs among another. So every uh, LED uh, needs to have an identical clock as the one as the neighboring LEDs. Uh, and you also need uh, synchronization between the LED and the receiver. 
and the more LEDs uh, that are in the field of view, so uh, the more time slots that you have to assign and the larger the latency. The latency is in fact, is the, is the time difference between the observation of, this, of, the, uh, of the signals and the estimation of the position. Now, a better scheme or a more simple scheme is where you deploy a frequency division multiple axis. So each LED is assigned a specific frequency, and um, which means that you don't need any synchronization at all between the, uh, between the LEDs in the time domain. The more LEDs that are in the field of view, the more bandwidth is needed and uh, the latency is actually determined by the lowest frequency, which uh, in case you're using visible light, um, has to be above 200 to 300 Hertz uh, in order to avoid uh, the flickering that can be observed by uh, a human being. <coughs> now, the choices that we have made at our campus in Ghent uh, we are using frequency division multiple axis, uh, receive signal strength based visible light positioning with the photodiode as a receiver. Another option is to use a camera, uh, but we prefer a photodiode due to the simplicity and the fact that uh, you have uh, plenty of bandwidth uh, available. There are a number of disadvantages also, but nevertheless, we have chosen uh, for the uh, for a photodiode. Uh, the drivers for this choice are that, uh, first of all, of course, due to the FDMA, you don't need any synchronization, so the infrastructure cost is minimal. Um, the photodiode is not expensive. Um, the precision is very high. I'll uh, elaborate that point uh, in a couple of slides. And the target is that we have a, sub a 10 centimeter positioning of uh, automated guide vehicles and forklift trucks in warehouses, uh, which enables the service of autonomous, uh, autonomous driving and um, navigation. So I'm, I'm connected to the Faculty of Engineering Technology. Uh, one of our purposes, since we are at the higher level of the, um, of the TRL, is really make things work, not just uh, a lot of theoretical elaborations. Okay, maybe first of all, um, maybe as, 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 a, as a refresher, uh, the difference between uh, precision and uh, accuracy. So as stated previously, uh, visible light positioning is uh, a, a very precise technology, which means that um, you don't need a lot of measurements to have a good estimate of uh, your position. So on the left hand, um, figure you can see that it's not precise and not accurate uh, so the, the precision is related to the spread of results and accuracy is related to the expectation value which is uh, close or not uh, to the bullseye so here in the second one we have very high precision so the spread on the measurements is very small but it's unfortunately not accurate the third one is not precise large spread uh, but it's quite accurate due to the fact that expectation value is close to the center and the, the fourth one is the, uh, is the holy grail. It's very precise and it's very accurate. Now with uh, resisting strength-based visible light positioning, um, there's a very high precision. That this has been proven uh, theoretically by the Kramer Rao logo bound, CRLB, and we have also performed uh, measurements where uh, we have our photodiode at a fixed position and we take plenty of measurements and based on these measurements we do an estimate of the position and we have seen that uh, it is uh, the spread is very very low so we have sub one millimeter spread under um, normal illumination levels which is a good thing um, which means that you don't need to collect a lot of uh, data points in order to uh, perform your estimate which has a positive, a positive consequence on the latency. And, and that is important, especially for um, indoor vehicles uh, or vehicles driving uh, indoors. Now, the challenging thing is the accuracy. Now, um, what we basically have, so you have your uh, forklift truck with your receiver, in our case, it's a photodiode. 
we have a very nice model which uh, must lead to an accurate uh, position. Now, the state of the art that is often used is um, that the channel model supposes a Lambertian radiator of a certain order M, which if for a bare LED is often M equal to one. And um, in a lot of papers, this is sufficient for most characterizations and models. Unfortunately, uh, we have done plenty of experiments and we have found out that it does not deliver uh, the needed accuracy. So the question is, what is the root cause? And um, if we know the root cause, how can we resolve it in order to have a, a better uh, of a higher accuracy? Based on that, we have we had a number of key questions. Uh, and here is already given a suggestion, namely, is a bare LED a perfect Lambertian radiator? That's the first question. And second question, if not, uh, what is the impact on the accuracy in received signal strength based visible light position? Now, fortunately, at our campus, we have the light and lighting laboratory um, where um, we can make use of a quite expensive photogoniometer. What we have done, we have selected an bare LED that was being used in the experiments. And in case you have a perfect Lambertian radiator, this is the expression for the uh, radiation pattern. In case it's m equal to one, so we have one over pi and uh, a pure cosine dependency on the angle theta as it is defined over here. So you have complete rotational symmetry since the variable phi is not included in that expression. <clears throat> now, based on uh, what we have measured, um, we have attached that um, accurate radiation pattern um, or the LED more specifically at a height of four meters. And uh, the, uh, with the hat, the hat is the estimation of the, of the distance and the D is the, uh, is the ground truth, is the accurate value. And you can see due to the fact that there is indeed an unsymmetry um, that there is a deviation between the ground truth and the, uh, and the estimation which for uh, a ceiling of uh, four meter high becomes quite significant uh, in the order of several uh, centimeters at least. When we attach the same LED at a, an, an even more increased height, uh, namely six meters, uh, which becomes representative for industrial environments such as warehouses and factories, you can see uh, the differences or the, the errors um, become quite large, um, even close to 20 centimeters, which is unacceptable um, for that matter. All right, um, that's an intermediate result. Uh, we have identified the root cause of, uh, of the poor accuracy. Now, the question of course, what is the uh, solution? Uh, one thing is that for each LED that you're using, you can measure uh, the exact radiation pattern, but it's, uh, it's quite expensive. Moreover, if you want to install these LEDs due to the fact that you don't have any rotation symmetry um, with all due respect, but most electricians don't have the time to, uh, to install this uh, to the accuracy of one degree, um, even if it was possible. Another possibility is to develop uh, dedicated received signal strength visible light positioning LEDs, which have a very close uh, or close to a perfect Lambertian pattern. That's also a quite expensive solution. And even then, tilting should be excluded or accurately quantified. Um, and the question at that moment we asked, is this the power off button push for highly accurate received signal strength based visible light positioning? And fortunately, the answer to that last question is no. Um, what we have done initially, um, here you have a simulation space. So this is the ground floor, um, the width of about seven meters and the length also seven meters. We have four LEDs, uh, perfect Lambertian radiators, but we have given them a certain tilt. So it deviates from the uh, perfect uh, radiation pattern, uh, which points uh, accurately downwards. 
we have a number of training points and we um, or and to say the researchers have uh, executed on one hand uh, a trilateration algorithm so it's indicated by the blue curve and you can see the on the y-axis you can see the errors which easily um, run up to several centimeters and on the orange brownish uh, curve you can see the results that we obtained with the multi-layer perception approach so a dedicated machine learning technique and depending on the number of training points so we have um, the left hand side 25 training points and the extreme right uh, 64 training points you can see that uh, the error decreases significantly and that is actually um, the approach that we are taking um, we do not want to include the heuristic of the non-ideal um, properties of an led possibly of a reflector of tilt and whatsoever um, actually when we are using uh, machine learning all that information is captured is embedded uh, by uh, training the machine learning uh, algorithm now when we take a look uh, when we take this a step further we have um, done a number of experiments in an um, a representative environment. Uh, we have attached eight LEDs uh, at the ceiling at a height of about a little bit less than seven meters. We have a test space of about uh, 160 square meters um, where a high flexibility at the transmitter site by the canvas connection was uh, realized. Um, the machine learning techniques uh, that were used or uh, shown previously um, are embedded on uh, on the mobile device in order to have a minimal latency so the actual estimation of the position is performed um, at the device itself we uh, are putting this available uh, for uh, as evaluation environment for companies who would be interested in this and for the longer term and then we're talking about two to three years we're also thinking about uh, 3d positioning and drone navigation at this moment we are uh, keeping uh, our focus on uh, 2D positioning since there uh, is already a, a, a significant uh, potential for valorization, industrial valorization. Let me show you a number of pictures of the environment. So this is warehouse like. Uh, the LEDs, the VLP, the light positioning beacons are not the luminars that are attached over here. In fact, it are the small uh, Lambertian-like radiators you can see over here. Now, of this picture, I've taken uh, a focus, a focus um, a zoom in, and here you have these different visible light positioning beacons. You can see these uh, over here. <clears throat> now, in order to compare our solution with uh, what is commercially available from other technologies. Um, four um, technologies have been uh, applied. Uh, first of all, in order to have the ground truth, we have um, used the LiDAR. Um, then we also used Marvelmite. Uh, it's Marvelmite, it's, it's the name of the commercial product of the ultrasound uh, positioning that we have used, and also POSIX, which, which is the, uh, the ultra wideband solution that we have used. Um, care has been taken that uh, all the systems have an identical timestamp. Um, the processing is on a Raspberry Pi, and all the information was collected by means of uh, MQTT. Now on this, um, I'm sorry for the Dutch uh, titles. On um, this slide, you can see on the left hand side, you have the X and the Y coordinates. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, we have the Euclidean error. In the, so the ground route is provided by the LiDAR. And the dark green, we have our visible light positioning solution on the, with the, um, light green we have ultra wideband and the blue is the ultrasonic so what you see the lidar is the red trace you're moving around the blue one is the ultrasound and uh the green dark green is our solution and the ultra wideband is the uh is the lighter uh green as you can see over here we have 
attach the Marvel Might and the POSIX reference nodes at these uh, blue crosses and the position of the LEDs at the ceiling is indicated by uh, the red um, squares. So this is a focus on uh, the tra trajectory um, at a certain part. So you can see um, we do not apply any filtering. Uh, so you have very high update rates. Uh, the ultrasonic positioning is clearly uh, performing less than the ultrawideband in our solution. And the performance of our solution and uh, ultrawideband, I think they are yeah, similar. Um, probably not being objective, but I have the impression that um, when you're using filtering, that we probably will have better results than ultrawideband, as you can see over here. Now, the entire footage, uh, I will put it on, um, or put it available after uh, this conference. Okay. So, um, let me conclude uh, this talk that uh, accurate visible light positioning is technically feasible. Um, the precision of visible light positioning is very high, which is a good thing, uh, but the accuracy was very challenging. And um, we have applied machine learning uh, in order to include uh, non-ideal contributions uh, for having this uh, high accurate solution. And uh, in fact, one uh, very nice thing about machine learning is the observation that you don't have to care at all about the, the, the nature of the non-ideal contributions as long as they are included in your training set, uh, you're doing perfectly fine. Um, of course, there, is, there are always challenges left. And one of the challenges is, of course, um, suppose that you have a well-trained uh, machine learning algorithm, which is embedded, uh, and that due to time variances, uh, for instance, aging of the LEDs or uh, moving parts in your warehouse, uh, that your um, algorithm is not accurate anymore. These are uh, certainly things that need uh, attention uh, in the near future in order to make it uh, a robust and, and solid solution for indoor uh, positioning. All right, um, that brings me uh, to the end of uh, this talk. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd be glad to answer a number of questions.